Hello, everybody. It is me, Shamu. Wait a minute. I mean Pacific. I like Shamu, man. Does anybody remember Shamu? The killer whale that was like a sea world? Oh, yeah. I'm dating myself. I know. Okay. You know me. I got to take on a whale of controversial subjects. So let's get right into it. I wanted to talk about something. This is going to be an interesting issue because I'm sure I will have people who are in the faith who will read me the riot act. But I also know that there will be atheists and people who consider themselves non-believers, but also Christians will say, you know what? Pacific is speaking the truth. I want to tell you some stories that are true and they involve myself. The title of this message is, God Save Me From Your People. I became a Christian in 1985. I converted to Christianity not because I think I have my act together and because I wanted to look down on people and be judgmental and be a jerk and be a hypocrite and all that. I became a Christian because I sensed a deep need in my life that there was something greater than myself out there. and. When I look at the complexity of the human body, when I look at the earth, when I look at all the systems that are in place, it clearly reeks of an intelligent designer. And if there was an intelligent designer, I'd better find out who he or she is. Now, I don't believe in a female deity, but, you know, at that time. I've been taught that evolution was true. It's banged out of every public school. But somehow, I just thought that that can't be. And after studying all the evidence that the evolution has put forth and listening to the simple story of creation, the flood of Noah, and all that that happened in Genesis, it made perfectly clear sense to me that God is who he is, that his word is true, and that he designed it all, and that he's coming back. Excuse me. I know a lot of people on my YouTube fan list and subscribers don't agree with everything I say. That's fine. I still thank you guys for being open-minded enough to watch. One of the greatest assets I have on YouTube is that people watch me that don't agree with everything I say. That is an art. Because I'm just keeping it real. I find that many Christians cloister in a Christian community and nobody outside of the faith is going to listen to a word they have to say because of many reasons. But one of the biggest problems I have with most Christians is that they are illiterate in many ways of their very own faith. A woman wrote me who had lived in Duluth, Minnesota, a watcher of my videos, and said that she was shocked to find most Christians don't even know the truth about their very own Bible that they claim to believe. I have found that to be true right here in Denver, Colorado. I hear Christians say things, and I've held up this book, and I said, uh, could you show me where that is in this? Oh, yeah, well, uh, no, show me where it is. They can't, and they won't. Christians are guilty of twisting the very book they claim to believe in to make it fit their twisted minds. Now, am I against Christianity? Absolutely not. I am a very big, avid, apologetics guy. I love to defend the faith with all kinds of people that I talk to. But at the same time, I'm a human being, and something bothers me. Since 1985, I've made the following observations that Christians are not always the nicest people. Sometimes the nicest people, to me, personally, that have helped me, that have encouraged me, that have given me jobs, given me places to stay, that have reached out to me, have not always been God's people. Now, let me give a caveat. This does not apply to all. Uh, there's a specific couple of brothers on YouTube that eagerly watch my videos and like what I have to say. One of them is a believer who lived in New York City. I'm not sure if he still does. I like everything he has to say. I believe he takes his faith seriously. I believe that that faith has caused him to check himself and to keep himself where he needs to be, and I respect that. I can't say his name because I don't want to call out people. I respect him as a fan. I respect him because he's using his mind and his heart, and he's sincere. I went to church last weekend with my lady friend, and a guy got up and said, 
young guy he says, wow, I just want to share what God's doing in California. He's just moving. We just went to a meeting with all these young people. We just felt that Jesus was there. I even went up and I prayed for a woman in a wheelchair and she got up and walked and got out. My lady friend and I both just looked at each other and thought, the quicker we get past this clown and on to the next thing that actually matters, it'll be better. We didn't say it, but we thought it and we discussed it in the truck after church and both of us. Her comment to me was quick and clear. That guy was stupid. That stuff he was saying, I, I don't believe it. And I said, neither do I. <sighs> Suddenly, God's got something going down in California. He even said, I believe that we clearly saw Jesus. For a lot of Christians in Denver, Colorado, and all over the United States, they got to have some euphoric experience to tell them that they need to drive and use their turn signals and stop at stop signs and follow speed limits really offends them. Christians don't want to hear about how to live. They want to hear about feeling good in Jesus. The whole Christian rock mu music movement is catering to a very immature, flaky, and shallow group of people. Yes, Pacific has said it. I listen to rock music. But rock music and God just don't mix. Why? The rock music movement was started out of a drug culture and a rebellious culture. And there are times when I have to stop and go, are you listening to the words of that song? And I listen closely and I go, ah, that's out of here. I'm not going to get into what kind of music I like in a church. But I think rock music has no place in Christianity. None. As far as worship of a holy God. A lot of Christians need some euphoric thing to get them through the day, when in actuality Christianity can be dry, long, dark valleys, hard days, and hardship, and Christians don't want to hear that. They want to go to church, get pumped up, feel good, put the pedal to the metal, play their Christian rock, and have their little honk if you love Jesus bumper stickers in their $65,000 SUVs, and they're good to go. But what we don't hear in pulpits today is pastors confronting the mentality of American women. We don't hear them talking about that at all. We hear men condemning men for lust, masturbation, looking with their eyes, and not being good husbands, not being good fathers. We hear nothing directed at today's females who are self-centered, narcissistic, show their cleavage in church, and all the other stuff that they do. One of the biggest sins of women in churches is gossip and tearing people to shreds behind their back. I'll tell you two stories. When I was in my 20s, I dated a white girl. Yes, the dreaded W word. She was the best woman that I had ever dated in the white race in my entire life. She was younger than me. She had ridden my bus as a camp counselor one summer for YMCA summer camp. She started making eyes at me and we started going out. We never had one argument. She was sweet. She was nice. She even came to church with me, got interested in the things of faith. And my well-meaning, well-intentioned, sincere Christian friend came to me and said, you're dating somebody who's not a believer. You're not supposed to be doing that. And he rode me, rode me like a horse, and I broke up with her. I didn't do everything in that relationship right. I had sex before marriage. She was actually the first woman that I had sex before marriage with, ever. She adored me. She was sweet on me. We enjoyed each other's company. My friend got to me. I broke up with her under the guise that, well, you're not a Christian. The girl was hurt. She went on and dated some guy who had an interest in her that she really wasn't enamored with. Promptly got pregnant and she had no choice but to marry him. I carried that blame for years because I shortly thereafter married a girl who was a Christian. I was married to her for 14 years. We Christians are all, are all at different stages, but let me share something, viewers. The woman that I was married to, this is not a video to get back at her or anybody else. Just stating the fact, this person doesn't even watch my videos. That's fine. The woman never could say these words. I am sorry, I was wrong. She was a shopaholic. She had addictions that didn't quit. 
and yet she nailed me, nailed me, nailed me. I'm not going to get into what she nailed me for. Some of it was over the top. Some of it was her overreacting to things. And yet she'd read Christian books. She'd underline, highlight this, talk about this, and talk about God. The 14 years I lived with her were unsettling. I found myself becoming very angry and very annoyed. In 2008, in the spring, I met, I got on a dating site called Mate One. I was trying to find somebody in lovely Hibbing, Minnesota. No sarcasm intended there. And instead, ended up meeting women from Asia. Viewers, you want to know how I went to Hong Kong and got to Asia? This is it right here. I was always thinking Europe. I was into transatlantic steamships and the Atlantic Ocean and Greenland and icebergs. And I was into Europe and England because they built the Titanic, or Ireland did, but it was the White Star Line out of England. I always was Euro-minded. Loved Euro music, loved the European culture. In 2008, I met two women that caused my bow to swing totally south and west towards Southeast Asia. Two women, one did not write me, the one did, but they both looked at my profile. The first one to write me was a woman from Tangerang, Indonesia. What amazed me about her was that her letters and emails to me were warm and genuine, in fact, warmer than any I've ever experienced from a woman in the United States. They wrote her back, I said, you're a very lovely woman, but you are Muslim. I am Christian, this will never work. She wrote back and said, yes, I understand, and I would never convert to Christianity, but I've looked at a lot of dating profiles, and I don't see a guy like you, and I'm not interested in taking advantage of your money or anything like that. I wish you'd come and visit me and spend some time with me and see if you like Indonesia and see if we have a chance of a life together. We wrote back and forth, and I will tell you that the power of her writing moved me so much. The other one looked at my profile but did not write me. She said in her profile, I want a man who's close to God. So naturally, I chose her. That was the one in Hong Kong from the Philippines. Before I get going on this one that I ended up marrying and got involved with, I think Filipinas are some of the nicest women in the world, as well as some Indonesian women. Excuse me. <coughs> Morning allergies. As I got to know this woman who was a few years older than me, who was a Christian, I also found a huge immaturity for her age. In fact, because of her background and where she grew up and her simplicity, she couldn't handle conflict. She couldn't be respectful or mature, and she lacked manners from the get-go. Yet she would try to instruct me about trusting God and trusting in Jesus, and something was interesting. I said, I don't know if we should get involved with each other. I'm looking at these immigration things, and uh, to get you to the U.S., it's very tough. They're going to look at my income. They're going to look at this, and this may or may not pass. She kept telling me, you've got to have faith. You've got to have faith. Well, I did marry her, and let me tell you, even when I met her online before I met her, she was very rude, very demanding, would hang up the phone, get very mad. Now, because of my problems in the online world and going to Hong Kong, I allowed myself to get into some very deep sin. What was it? Womanizing. When that relationship started going down and I found so many pretty women, and I finally put her out of my life. I chased other women. I dated many women. I was very honest and upfront. Can't marry you, but hey, if you want to go out and have a good time, okay. And I did. What bothered me about this woman is she thought she was so close to Jesus and even used words like, I wouldn't do that. I'm a Christian woman. Yet she was rude, demanding, asking for money and always telling me to have faith. And finally, I woke up one day and said, it's always interesting that you tell me to have faith that God can do this or that, but it's always coming out of Pacific's bank account. You have contributed nothing to the immigration process. You've given me not one dime for attorney's fees or nothing. Her response to that was, that's the man's job. 
When I look back at the Indonesian Muslim woman, she continued to keep in contact with me. She married a guy from the UK. She got pregnant. She moved to the UK. She hated it over there. Found Europe to England to be very cold. And she found that the warmth and the sweetness of her village and her people was no longer there. Yet she remained true to him. She had a baby, was proud to have a baby, but longed to go back home. She made the transition to focus on him, so we no longer talk anymore, but she was the warmest, sweetest woman to me, for one being a Muslim, and she was not one that supported the terrorist attacks or any of that. She was what I call a very low-end Muslim. She was not into all that violence and stuff. Now, I will tell you that this book tells us Christians do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. It's talking about business relations, you know, having a partnership, and also marital. I understand why, because if you're a Christian, you're going to have a struggle with somebody who is not. There will always be that tug of war. However, I've been married to two women that were Christians. Both of them were not very nice. Both of them could never admit they're wrong. Both of them were rude. When I divorced the wife of 14 years, to this day, she is still rude, unprofessional, and horrible to me. Yet as reading Christian books goes to a church where they play loud Christian rock music, and she constantly tells me how spiritual and how close to Jesus they are. And I looked at her one day and I said, I don't think you really know Jesus because I don't see any positive change in your life at all. She's still a shopaholic. She's still miserable. Whenever there's peace between us, she's got to shatter that peace. Why am I saying this? Because it's the truth. I know a man in Minnesota who was my friend for years. We had our ups and downs. I depended on him way too much. Told him all about my problems, and he told me all about his. He was the one that told me to break up with the white woman way back when. The guy came out of the homosexual lifestyle. He was married to a wife he could not stand and still is. She was quite obese, overweight, and he couldn't stand her. The property that he lives on, she owns, 40 acres. He built a house and he got obsessed with that house. Became very materialistic. When he got converted to Christianity, he decided he was no longer satisfied with that house sold five acres of that property, kept the 35, moved on the rest of the property, and built another house even more grandiose, as well as a studio house building outside of that. Even more obsessive compulsive. The man started becoming very self-righteous and kept using the term, I'm going to break fellowship with this person over here because they don't go to church and they don't do this. And with me, he pointedly told me, You've had sex outside of marriage. You've been divorced. I'm in a great fellowship with you. Okay, that's fine. Not once did he ever look at his rabid materialism, which was an excuse to avoid dealing with the fact he couldn't stand his wife, so he buried himself into a project. He believed it was wrong to divorce his wife, which I laud him for that, but deep inside his heart he has hatred towards that woman. He got himself deeply into debt, to build this new place and I think of Paul saying be content with such things as we have and he has not exemplified that at all you cannot tell him his sins he'll freely tell you yours and this is the way it is with a lot of Christians I've gone into church after church in Denver where people won't even say hello where they're smug self-righteous and stand up clapping for Jesus and got all their little bumper stickers there was a woman at a church I went to here in Colorado church secretary. She started taking an interest in me. I only noticed her because she stood in front of me and then she kept talking to me and coming on to me and we started walking on Sundays after church. I took her to lunch and stuff like that. Then she started saying, well, you should come to Wednesday night, Sunday night and do this. And I said, I don't want to. I'm just coming to church. I don't stay up late. I got work to do, early work, driving school bus, stuff like that. She wanted to delve into my past. I was honest enough to tell her. She has never been married. She's 47 years old. She will die a spinster. She lives with her mother. She was very judgmental, very self-righteous, and 
came on to me, came on to me. And I said, well, why don't we date each other and see where it goes? Nope, we didn't want to do that. But yet she kept coming on to me. And then one day she wrote me this letter saying that I was not living for God because this, 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 and this. And I'm like, wow. I still hear Christians get up on their high horse and say, you're not supposed to date non-Christians. And I sit there and go, yes, I know what the Bible says, but when I look around at a lot of the ladies in churches, especially white women, and even a lot of other ethnic women that get brainwashed in the church mentality, they start looking at, an, at, at unbelievers as an us versus them mentality and start looking down their noses at them. And instead of trying to reach them and form genuine, sincere relationships with those people, they look at them as a salesman does, somebody who walks on the used car lot. Oh, we have a customer on the lot, and the salesmen descend like flies, and you're just simply looking. I have said to salesmen, when I am interested in a vehicle, I will give you, I will go over to your office, okay? Well, then they get mad, and suddenly their friendliness and sweetness to you goes right out the window. They're not going to make a sale that day, so they have no time for you, and that is the way it is with Christians. Christians, Christianity is not a marketable business. I know you've all listened to Rick Warren and the Wallet Driven Purpose, his book, The Purpose Driven Life, Joel Osteen and others who make millions of dollars marketing their twisted view of faith. The Christianity, if you look at Jesus Christ, he went to the cross, the disciples all suffered and were martyred. We better start looking at that model. For me, when I try to live my Christian life, things don't go very well. The world around me doesn't like us very much. You're a conservative. You're into God. You don't believe in evolution. And we are not allowed in any reindeer games. It took me a long time to get used to that, and I'm okay with that. But I also have a lot of people on YouTube that are not Christians who are very nice to me. They have intelligent discussion with me. They even bring up God all by themselves. And I love them. Because they're people. And I think a lot of Christians in America forget that. They go to their little on fire for Jesus seminars and God healed this person. People got out of wheelchairs. Even though we have no proof of that whatsoever. And it's all psychosomatic and complete. Sorry to say this word, Christian. BS. Christianity is more about believing this book. Treating people right. Driving according to the law. I've had more Christian people tell me, oh, you're earning money under the table. You don't need to claim that. The government doesn't know about it. Wait a minute. You told me that God knows everything. Aren't we supposed to do things unto God? It says give to Caesars what is Caesars and give to God's what is God's. As an American, we're required to pay taxes. When I make money under the table doing private contracting that I also did this summer, I report it. Why? Because God knows how much I got. It doesn't matter if Uncle Sam saw it. I've heard more Christians tell me things that don't make sense. I hear preachers trying to be so hip with their congregation. And they talk about seeing men in black in the current movie. And I sit there going, wait a minute. Why are they watching these movies? There's violence. There's nudity and sexual scenes. But then those same men will get up and condemn men for masturbating and lusting. But they watched a movie where a couple are doing it totally nude on the screen. A lot of Christians are hypocritical. They believe the right stuff, but when it comes out to applying what they know, they don't. They want to fit in with the culture. They want to be seen as cool. They want to be seen as hip. I see so many youth pastors having fun with the teenage kids, and they're not teaching them one ounce of holy biblical truth at all. They don't teach them how to refute evolution. They don't teach them how to live. I find a lot of preachers in the pulpit to be very arrogant smug, know-it-alls, and not care one bit about other people that isn't part of their little clique or group. Where's the love? Talking to Christians is one of the most difficult things I can do. When I go to church, I pretty much ignore all of the so-called saints. I go to hear the word, and I try my best to apply that sermon out of the pastor's mouth as best as I can, though not always successful. It's lonely in church. Sometimes I don't even like it in there. 
the hullabaloo and phony baloney and that we have to hire greeters and then everybody comes up, hi, how are you? And what's really sad is most of the churches that are preaching truth only have elderly people in them. No young people. All the young people are over at the guitars, flaming guitars for Jesus Church with drums and this and that and drinking $5 coffee with Starbucks coffee bars in the foyers of their churches and it's like, boy, they're really trying to make church a cool place to go. One church even had bowling alley and McDonald's in it. If you're a firm believer in Charles Stanley, you can go on Christian cruises. Oh boy, that sounds like a lot of fun. We're going to tell the world that we have a lot of money to go on a cruise to hear Dr. Stanley when you can just turn on the TV or order an audio cassette. But we're going to go on a cruise for Jesus while people are starving around the globe. And the people who are Stanley followers and these big name preachers that are doing very well they're not parting with their money at all. They're living their best life now. <laughs> no pun intended, Joel Osteen. I have a problem with a lot of American Christianity. It falls short and it is found wanting. God save me from your people. Some of them are horrible. There are times when I would rather, if there's a bad storm coming or a bad problem in life coming, that I'd rather be next to a Muslim woman in Indonesia who we're both going to get our heads together and figure out what we need to do, then some Christian screaming Jesus out of his lips, who's a complete jerk, insincere, and has no love in his or her heart for me. Americans have been taught very well how to play a game. They've been taught how to be fake. We see it at car dealerships. We see it with the young men in business suits. Hi, how you doing? Save it, buddy. You're full of it. You don't care. Our culture teaches us to be fake. The church teaches us to be fake. Preachers don't want to offend women in the congregation. They're not going to talk about inappropriate dressing and gossip and a host of other sins that women commit. I have yet to see a church that really deals with all of the stuff that needs to be dealt with. I find churches writing false doctrine hobby horses. I find churches that yell and scream, you must speak in tongues or you're not filled with the Spirit. I hear churches talk about, we're going to have a healing service, i.e. Mr. Benny Hinn, who lives in a very opulent house and spends $10,000 a night in European hotels. Yes, look it up. That's a fact. And yet, God's people give money to these clowns, but they won't help the poor guy next door struggling, who is trying to get work, who is trying to make it, I find that Christians are good at giving, and I find that they're very good at a lot of things. But where it's really at, they're strangely absent and silent. The girl from Indonesia had a heart who was nice, and there are people who write me, yeah, but if you'd have married her, you would have had problems. Maybe no, maybe so. I'm tired of Christians saying that if you don't do everything God's way, it's always going to go to pot and fall apart. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't because God in his mercy sometimes just shows up in the middle of the situation and turns it around for his good. Our barometer for what we do should not be because this works or this doesn't work. Our barometer for what we do should be because God said, we don't do this. But too many Christians set up straw man arguments and say, well, if you have sex outside of marriage, you're going to be miserable. Your life's going to be miserable. God will afflict you with STDs. That was the big thing with the gays. You know, gays got HIV because God's judgment came on them. Hold it right there. What about the church bus in Indiana that crashed the other day within a mile of returning home from almost 400 mile trip? Crashed. The pastor and his wife were killed. Why did that happen? Let me tell you something. I've done a lot of things I shouldn't have done. I've had premarital sex, extramarital sex, whatever you want to call it, fornication. I have no STDs. Am I bragging? No, it's because of God's mercy. We need to be careful about saying that if you do this, God's judgment lightning bolts are going to come down. Sometimes it doesn't because of God's mercy. Sometimes somebody barely steps over a line and God goes, Pfft. I shouldn't say God does that, but he allows something horrible to happen. We don't know what God is doing on that front, and we'd best be quiet. 2004, when the tsunami hit Indonesia, Christians stood up and said, God must be judging them. 
I'm going to say something. I'm sick of that. They said it about Japan. I heard a guy say, well, Japan's heathen nation. Ha, and so are we. In fact, most Christians in the U.S. aren't even doing what they're supposed to be doing. And we're marketing a brand of Christianity that is so foreign to this book that even the world that doesn't believe is commenting. A, Roman, a woman wrote me yesterday and said a chat room is not church and she's an atheist. People don't go to church and they watch Christian television, which is just full of landmines. Most of those preachers on Christian TV are the biggest phony baloney charlatan liars, demon-controlled people, taking people's money and living the good life while deceiving millions of dumb sheep. Yes, I said it. Christianity is not easy. It's about proper belief about treating people properly and I admit there are days when I don't always treat people properly especially when they're banging on me and being rude I'm going to speak my mind and that's another thing Christians are taught to turn the other cheek wait a minute speaking the truth is what I'm taught to do and if my truth offends you I'm not going to apologize for it if I'm being an obnoxious jerk I will be apologetic but if I'm saying something that's true and you don't like it you write me back in all capitals and scream and yell and cuss at me, that's your problem. Yes, a lot of Christians aren't very nice, not very sincere, not very real. In fact, most Christians I meet in most churches today don't show any true transformation coming into contact with Jesus. I find them to be worse than the world around them, drive no different, spend and live and their materialistic lifestyle choices are no different than the so-called lost and those headed for hell. I think of that woman overseas who married a guy from Britain. And she was the sweetest woman I have known for somebody who wasn't a believer. There are men and women that I write to on this channel that are not Christians. And they're some of the nicest, most encouraging people. I'm trying to tell you something, folks. Don't run around telling people Jesus is better when you're acting like horse poo-poo. Because people won't buy it. I want people to see something in me that makes them want to have it or sense a need in their life. And if they don't see that, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Actions speak louder than words. And sometimes, viewers, my own actions aren't very good. Most Christians I know, they don't even believe in living actions. They think that Christianity is talking the right stuff and being able to understand all the mysteries of the Bible and have great Bible seminars and talk about and take apart theology. It's more than that. This is Pacific. I've weighed in. And for those of you that are my brothers and sisters in the faith, save me, you're hateful. Jesus is going to get you your anti-God comments. Because, no, God's not going to get me. He's already got me. And if I'm stepping over line, he will take care of that. Guaranteed, it won't be you guys. For those of you that are Christians that try to live their faith and have good things to say to me and are trying to live what they believe, my hat is off to you. Keep on keeping on. For those of you that are non-Christians, atheists, practice Wicca and all your different religions that I don't agree with, I thank you for watching, I thank you for keeping an open mind, and I thank you that you're you, and that you at least have enough sense to watch and listen to what Pacific has to say, even though you don't agree. I respect that. A lot of Christians won't listen to people that disagree with them. They'll shut them off and they'll ignore them and avoid them. If I am right in what I believe, then I can stand up to scrutiny and challenge. If I'm not right and I'm insecure and i got to hide, it means that I'm not secure in my belief and don't really know what I believe. I think I've proven to all my YouTube viewers that I'm fairly well grounded in what I believe. And nobody's going to shake me off of that. Another surprise out there for Christians and non-Christians. I actually learn a lot from those that aren't Christians, sometimes more than those that are Christians, because... Truth doesn't just exist in one who claims to be a Christian. There are people that have bits of truth 
that they've passed on to me that has been profound and affected me deeply. Like I said years ago, everybody is my teacher. Some show me how to live, some show me how not to live. Some deposit the information, wisdom, and knowledge in me that I am grateful for. Some show me that's not somebody I want to emulate. So, Pacific's not the great know-it-all. I'm not the guru. I'm not the spiritual patriarch. I'm just Pacific. Fumbling through life. Believing the truth as it's revealed to me day by day. Talking to people, engaging with society internationally, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, all around the globe. I think people are awesome. I love diversity. I love color. I like people that are not just like me. This is Pacific, signing off. Bye-bye.